Matthew Leprosti joins me now from Hawaii via Skype. He's a representative in Hawaii State Legislature. Uh, representative Leprosti, welcome to the show. Uh, we Hello. know that yesterday there was panic, confusion, and even frustration at the government's uh, emergency alert, or rather false alert. How are people in Hawaii doing today? Well, people are going back to their normal lives. Uh, it, was a lot, it was very stressful yesterday. Uh, but, you know, people are very resilient here. It's a credit to the people of Hawaii and our culture of preparedness for natural disasters that, you know, a lot of people were prepared. They, many of them kept their cool. And fortunately, nobody was injured. Well, we just heard from our correspondent, Toby Muse, that 93% uh, of the sirens uh, worked, uh, but some 12 did not really work or did not work precisely uh, during a drill last year. How prepared do you think Hawaii really is in terms of a real threat, let's say, uh, from the DPRK or any other third party? Well, th there's a lot of different ways to answer that. I mean, from the military perspective, you know, we have an extremely ready military. They're definitely prepared. It's about whether or not we have the system in place to inform and keep informed the public. And, and that's where our role as state legislators come in and the role of civil defense. Obviously, yesterday there was a, a failure of the system to get the word out after the false alarm was sent. You know, they did cancel it. Uh, your, your earlier reporter said that they didn't cancel it. They did cancel it. But what they need to do is follow up with an alert to say that this was a, a mistake or a false alarm. And that's something that they're putting into place now. They already have that put into place. But I believe there was a 13-minute uh, delay uh, between the false alert and the, the corrected uh, alert. Uh, what happened? I mean, actually, uh, it was a 38-minute delay, and uh -huh. it's not entirely clear what happened. So I, I sit on the public safety committee. We're going to have a hearing this week because the public deserves to know what happened minute by minute, and and the evaluation of that system has to be transparent because there's nothing more important with civil defense than people's confidence in the system to work and inform them properly. So can you tell us about the preparedness of the second line of defense, uh, well, let's say the shelter systems, uh, the shelter infrastructures in Hawaii, should there be an attack? Well, like many places on, on the planet, there's not many shelters anymore. You know, during the Cold War, there was an active shelter system. As the Cold War progressed, a lot of those shelters were just shelved. And, and weren't really maintained anymore. Uh, so there is a conversation about whether or not we need to re-identify them. And I have advocated for over a year now that we need to re-identify them given the North Korean uh, rogue state threat. And uh, people need to know where they are and, and they need to know what to do to survive potential uh, nuclear attack and nuclear fallout. So also I was told that when you hit the uh, alert button, usually they're should be a confirmation button from a higher-ranking authority. Uh, what happened in terms of that uh, yesterday? Yeah, I mean, that's where everybody's scratching their heads because it, it apparently it, the system asked, are you sure? And the person said yes. And they've already put in place, there has to be a two-person confirmation. That should have been there to begin with. Uh, again, you know, just to get into your bank information online, you've got to have two-step confirmation. And it sounds like they didn't even have uh, a sophistic, more sophisticated system like that um, to send out the alert. And, and that's already changed from what I understand. All right. Representative Matthew Leprosti from Hawaii Legislature, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Aloha.